Good morning. Today is Wednesday the 16th of December and we're in the third week of Advent. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the coming solemnity of your Son may bestow healing upon us in this present life and bring us the rewards of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is from Isaiah, and we're in the third part of the book of Isaiah. It's the end of the exile and the post-exilic period back in Jerusalem. And the reading, I'm going to read the beginning and the end. The beginning, apart from me, all is nothing. I am the Lord unrivaled. I form the light and create the dark. I make good fortune and create calamity. It is I, the Lord, who do all this. By my own self I swear it. What comes from my mouth is truth, a word irrevocable. Before me every knee shall bend, by me every tongue shall swear, saying, From the Lord alone come victory and strength. To him shall come, ashamed, all who raged against him. Victorious and glorious through the Lord shall be all the descendants of Israel. The word of the Lord. The Gospel is from Luke chapter 7, nine, verses 19 to 23. John, summoning two of his disciples, sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or must we wait for someone else? When the men reached Jesus, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or have we to wait for someone else? It was just then that he cured many people of diseases and afflictions and of evil spirits and gave the gift of sight to many who were blind. Then he gave the messengers their answer. Go back and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind see again, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised to life, the good news is proclaimed to the poor and happy is the man who does not lose faith in me. Gospel of the Lord. First reading from Isaiah is precious to us in two ways. The opening section is that I am the God above all gods. In fact, there, those other gods don't exist. Everything exists because of what I've done and only what I created exists. So this firm claim that God is the God of fortune and calamity, the God of all that is and isn't, is this claim that the God of Israel is not only superior to the gods of Babylon, but completely pushes them to one side. In fact, those gods are nothing. It's the second section that I read, the closing section of today's reading, which is so precious to us, because it's the verses used in the hymn that Paul quotes in his letter to the Philippians. The Philippians have been arguing among themselves and Paul is saying to them, you must be of one mind, but above all, you must be humble before each other and not try and force your point of view on other people, but listen to their point of view. And then he goes into this beautiful hymn saying, God was, Jesus was not so humble to hold on to his divinity, but accepted to become human. And then he became even more humble and accepted death, even death on a cross. And then he rose again so that every knee shall bow, every knee shall bend, and every tongue proclaim that Jesus is Lord. And that phrase, every knee shall bend and every tongue proclaim, is taken precisely from this reading we've just heard from Isaiah. So there's a very real sense that we're hearing the Trinity, that in the original meaning it was applied to the God of Israel, and this time in Philippians it's applied to Jesus, who is therefore also divine. So we're hearing of the three persons in the one God. The Gospel, it's a passage we've heard fairly recently, um, when 
John's disciples come to him to say, Are you the Messiah? Um, or are we to wait for somebody else? Now if you remember, John was saying, uh, I am not Elijah, therefore uh, I'm not quite sure who this person is. Perhaps Jesus is Elijah. But Jesus sends the message back and says, No, I am the Messiah. And precisely he claim, makes that claim by talking of the messianic powers and actions. The blind see, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life. The gospel is preached to the poor. So it's a clear answer to John that Jesus is the Messiah. It takes John a bit, a bit while longer to realise that if Jesus is the Messiah then John must be Elijah, but that comes later. But part of Jesus' coming is what's referred to in the opening prayer um, the coming solemnity of your Son may bestow healing upon us in this present life. So part of Christmas, the coming of baby Jesus, God becoming man, is a time of healing for us. And I suppose the biggest healing all of us need is the healing that comes from hope, but also the healing that comes from humility. That God didn't come in triumph and splendor, but came in poor poverty of a refugee family coming down from the north of Israel to the south, nowhere to spend the night. Jesus is born in an animal shed, and just a few days, a week later, they have to flee the country, uh, and they become refugees uh, in the foreign land of Egypt. So it's that humility which gives us the healing that we know that humility is the way to follow Christ. That uh, all, all sense of superiority and being the people who always do right. No, our way is to confess our sins, know that we are sinners, that we need the Lord for healing of mind and body, soul and spirit, and that we come for this healing as we come before the crib of Jesus at Christmas. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response is, Come Lord Jesus. The word of God has chosen to live among us. Let us thank him and give him praise. Come Lord Jesus. Bring justice to those bowed down with suffering. Defend the poor and the powerless. Come Lord Jesus. Prince of Peace, Turn our jealousies into love. Teach us to forgive rather than give way to anger. Come, Lord Jesus. When you come to judge the world, may we stand before you without fear. Come, Lord Jesus. You stand in our midst unknown. Help us to find you in the poor and in the troubled. Come, Lord Jesus. You taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Almighty God and Father, by our celebration of the coming feast of your Son's birth, heal our present ills and lead us to eternal joy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. Go in peace.